Coming up on Owl TV News, find out about the harmful contagious social disease affecting many college students. Also, learn updates on the identity of the fourth man involved with the murder of an FAU student from the shooting at University Park this past December. Later, discover why Deputy Director of Simon Strott Center for the Prevention of Genocide shares untold stories of devastation and destruction to the FAU community. And find out which political activist artist collaborates with FAU students. Hello everyone and welcome to OWL TV News. I'm Daphne August. And I'm Kiana Campbell. Thank you for joining us. Affluenza is affecting college students and their wallets by spending money they do not have. All in an attempt to achieve the American dream, which has become warped. OWL TV's Brooke White has the details. There is a harmful, contagious disease that is going untreated in America that we all have come in contact with. Doctors are calling this virus affluenza, a socially transmitted disease that relies on the pursuit of a lifestyle not everyone can attain. I define wealth as having enough money to, uh, to be set for life and you don't have to worry about money anymore. I guess for me cars though, I need, just in this world you need money to do things. And it's having a lot of money or wealth and succeeding in your job. One of the effects of affluenza is to change our thinking to equate wealth with money and materials. This has caused consumer spending to steadily rise and savings to increasingly decline. One of the main causes of the disease is our daily exposure to advertisements. From billboards to commercials to buses, we can't escape the pressure to buy. But does spending money actually bring us happiness? One FA student gives us her answer. I think happiness consists of sharing your life with someone and having personal relationships with other people and being able to wake up every day with like meaning and not just have like material things. Sounds like the cure for affluenza isn't inside a mall, but spending quality time with each other. This has been Brooke White reporting with OWL TV News. Thank you, Brooke. It has been two months since the shooting at University Park, and the fourth man to be arrested, Adonis Gillis, is to be held without bail in the murder of Nicholas Acosta, an FAU student. Gillis, along with three other men, were arrested during the last couple of months since the shooting and had additional charges of burglary on top of first-degree murder and robbery with a firearm, according to the indictment. This country is no stranger to violence and fighting. However, some people forget that the fight still continues in other countries. Which is why the Deputy Director of Simon C. Jot Center for the Prevention of Genocide hosts a lecture to inform Americans about the genocide and crimes against humanity. Owls TV Michael Mora has the details. Staff from Simon Skijot Center for the Prevention of Genocide recently visited FAU where they shared documentation of ISIS committing mass atrocities in northern Iraq. I had a chance to speak with Deputy Director Naomi Kickler. So our hope by hosting this event here at Florida Atlantic University was to be able to shed light on the genocide that was perpetrated in Iraq and that continues to happen. I think it's really important to engage a student audience, but also the broader public in a conversation about what never again should mean, what it should mean for each of us in our individual lives, but also what we expect of our government. I think that there has been a lot of attention on the plight of Christians and of Yazidis. I think that helps to compel international action. I think sometimes, though, we tend to portray these situations in very simplistic terms, or we might overlook certain issues. There's also risks, you know, there was a lot of media attention on the sexual violence that was perpetrated against Yazidi women, up until the point in which journalists were actually covering in a very detailed way how women were being rescued and liberated. And the unintended consequence of revealing that very kind of complicated process of liberating and freeing women was that the Islamic State fighters made it much harder for women to go. You know, there was 60 Minutes that did uh, a documentary, I believe, or Frontline. There was a lot of coverage uh, in newspapers. And the unintended consequence of that is that it's harder now for women to, to escape 
and to be liberated. So you know, the media, it's a very, it is a, at times potentially a double-edged sword. We need to see attention, we need to see uh, more awareness, and the media can help to do that, but it has to do that in a way that doesn't harm local populations on the ground who are facing threats by the Islamic State. FAU students get a wake-up call with new documentation from northern Iraq. Um, well, I have great-grandparents who survived Holocaust as well, so I think just the fact that they're doing something to help educate the community and spread the word about how important some of these issues are um, is important. And I didn't realize that there are such big organizations speaking out to help others and to educate the community on these issues. Um, a lot about Iraq. I didn't know a lot of the... Um, the extent of the things that were happening there. You know, they talk about it a lot on TV, but we don't see graphic images like what he showed tonight. So I think those were very meaningful to help us understand the true extent of the situation there. Definitely the camps there. Um, just kind of seeing how mass they are and how many people are stuck in these camps and suffering. It's really, it's, it's entirely hard for us to imagine because we live in such a privileged um, country that there's people living in such extreme poverty and conditions that horrendous. The United States Holocaust Memorial Museum offers several ways to support efforts in the prevention of genocide. Visit ushmm.org slash support. I'm Michael Mora with OWL TV. Thank you, Michael. Don't go anywhere. We still have so much more to cover on OWL TV News. And when we come back, find out why a former physics professor leaves a $1.1 million donation and learn which political activist artist collaborates on a project with FAU faculty and students. Welcome back. FAU's own Dr. Bajoran Lamborn left a $1.1 million donation to establish an eminent scholar chair in theoretical physics. He also left a $100,000 scholarship endowment for undergraduate physics students who are seeking a doctoral degree in theoretical physics. Dr. Lamborn is a former retired professor and chair of the Department of Physics in the College of Science at FAU. At 78 years old, Dr. Lamborn passed away earlier this month. Lamborn was more than a professor. He was instrumental in getting the PhD program in physics at FAU approved in 1988 and oversaw its implementation. Dr. Lamborn will surely be missed, and on behalf of FAU, thank you. FAU Schmidt Gallery opens its door to political activist artist Jay Critchley. Luckily, FAU faculty and students get a chance to collaborate with him. Our TV's Ashley OG has the details. FAU Schmidt Gallery gets a visit from political activist Jay Critchley. His most effective artwork is from his corporation, which gives condoms a new patriotic design. I would have to say what's the most meaningful or most uh, that, that has the most effect it would be Old Glory Condom Corporation, my patriotic condom company which uh, I founded at MIT in 1989. It was a response to the, um, to the Bush administration and, and senators and congressmen trying to make it illegal to burn the flag. There, there had been a Supreme Court decision, Texas versus Johnson, which had said it is a freedom of expression to burn the flag. So at that time, it was 1989, it was also in the throes of the AIDS pandemic. So. I thought this is a great opportunity to redefine patriotism, that it's, it's uh, patriotic to protect and save lives. Political activist Jay Critchley is no stranger here at FAU, but this year he collaborates with FAU faculty and students, leaving with them words of wisdom. It was really great because we, we were started talking about a year ago and then uh, for several months we met every week. I was on the telephone teleporting. And um, uh, basically it was Desmond Gallant from the theater department, Julie Ward for visual arts, James Cunningham from uh, music, and Rod. And then four of us met every week and uh, developed some ideas uh, based on my book that's being published next year, Uncle Jay. And then I met with Julie Ward's class, and that's where the idea came to, to actually create the septic theater. I have this underground septic tank that I turned into a theater in my backyard. So we actually, so the idea with this project was recreating an above ground circular beehive shaped space that could be used as a performance space. 
And so um, that came out of the collaboration. And also building an outhouse that was with Desmond Gallant and people from the theater department. What advice can you give aspiring artists? Don't listen to what anyone says about your work. Just do it. Whether you're the next Picasso or need to get inspired, check out Jay Critchley Incorporated exhibit. I'm Ashley Oji, now back to the studio. Thank you, Ashley. That was a great opportunity for students to work together and get their hands dirty. And I hope more people come out to support the FAU artists and visit the Schmidt Gallery. Definitely. Well, Owls, thank you, and that's all for today's show. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram.